Have you ever wondered why scientists think about and talk about so many different types of rocks? My name is Zita from Pacific Science Center, and today we're studying geology and learning how different rocks can tell us about the past and the history of an area of Earth. Let's take a look. So here I have a variety of rocks in front of me, and you can tell that they're all different colors. But I can also let you know that some of these rocks are very smooth, some are very bumpy, and some are very, very lightweight because they're full of a lot of holes. All of this tells geologists something about the history of that area. How much gas may have been trapped in those rocks when it erupted out of a volcano, and the color, as well as the amount of gas holes, can tell us also about the chemical composition of these rocks. Here I have a piece of granite. Now, not only is it quite large, but when you look closely at it, you can see that there's some big shiny parts. There are some big crystals that we can see, shiny parts that are white, that's the mineral quartz, a little bit of pink and gray, that's feldspar, and some black pieces, that is often mica. The fact that this piece of granite has big crystals in it tells us that it was formed deep inside the earth slowly over thousands and thousands of years. We call this an intrusive rock because it was inside the earth. Other rocks that came out of the earth very quickly were extruded igneous rocks like pumice or obsidian. These cooled very, very fast. They went from molten liquid rock to very, very cool rock when it hit our air really quickly. And there wasn't time for these crystals to form. Here, let me show you a demonstration. So this granite here is made up of a lot of different types of mineral just like you would make a chocolate chip cookie using lots of different types of ingredients. Now the ingredients for this rock include some minerals that when they form crystals, they might be black in color, that's mica. They might be white in color, that's quartz, and they might even have a little pink or gray in color, that's feldspar. Now all these minerals, when they are inside of the magma deep in our earth, they're just all mixed up have a whole bunch here, they're mixed up, it's molten rock, it moves around very, very slowly. Now the interesting thing about minerals is that as they cool, they tend to collect with each other. That's because they, their different chemical structure allows the molecules to come together and latch together to make bigger and bigger chunks until eventually you get enough of the same type of mineral coming together to make a crystal that is big enough that you can see it with just your eye. So, right now we have little bits of all these minerals and they're just floating around in this big hot liquid magma. And as it slowly cools, there's time for some of these quartz pieces to come together, some of the feldspar to come together, some mica to come together over here, and some more mica over here, and then some feldspar to come together. And after a long, long time, you can see that we have some crystal chunks. We have some chunks of pink, some chunks of white, some chunks of black, and together we have something that looks like this. Now let's try this again, only this time we're going to try to move these into a crystal formation, except instead of staying underground and cooling very, very slowly over thousands and millions of years, this chunk of magma is going to get blasted out of a volcano. It's going to move from the very, very hot liquid magma stage to the air temperature, which is much cooler in comparison. And we'll see if we can form some of these crystals, but in a lot less time. Okay, I've got a helper who's going to let me know when the eruption starts and when the magma or the lava, once it's erupted, is so cool that the minerals can't move anymore. Okay, we're in magma, we're in magma. Go ahead, volcano helper. Eruption! Three, two, one. Okay. I didn't have very much time for these minerals to move around and form large crystals. In fact, they're all just kind of locked pretty much in place where they were when they started. This is what we call a volcanic glass, and obsidian is a really great example of that. And when you look closely at the obsidian, you'll see there's no crystals visible like there is in the granite. Instead, it's just all shiny and basically one color. So that's a little bit of how you can learn a lot about the rocks and how they formed, the situation they were in, based on things that you can see. So the next time you see a piece of rock like this, remember, don't take it for granted.